What a lot of kids don't consider is they believe it to be innocent, they trust, that being the key word, they trust the other person that's receiving it on the other end, not to share it, not to ever get angry at them, not to save it anywhere, not to ever use it for anything other than just the possible comedic value or the romantic value in which they sent it. And we all know in, the, in this world, in this day and age, we, like any relationship, there is no permanency. To, to certain things, especially as a teen. You know, we go through lots of changes in our teenage years. The person that we dated in high school, probably not gonna be the person that we marry. So what are we leaving behind with these people that could come back to haunt us in our adulthood? Um, because it's non-threatening to them. Um, and that's one of the things, one of the messages we try to carry out to them is, okay, when you're doing it, it doesn't feel threatening, but do you want that picture showing up 10 years from now? Do you want that picture showing up five years from now when you're applying for that first major job after you finish college? Do you want that person to use that picture to try to blackmail you 10 years down the road when you're somebody important? Um, they don't feel threatened by it because they have a very narrow time frame in which they're thinking about. And all too often, uh, one of the stats that just recently came out basically says that two in five girls between the ages of 10 and 15 years old has already sent sexually explicit messages to somebody that they know. Well, it's, it's all gray area to them. You know, it's, it, kids are still at this point in time, even when you're talking about juniors and seniors in high school, they're still building their moral character. And if they don't feel this is a threatening behavior, if they don't feel that it is something that they need to be concerned about, they don't find it to be a moral issue. It's something they did with fun. It's something they did for somebody that they care about. It's something that they thought was just a temporary thing and then it's just gonna go away and no one would ever see it. And all too often, we all know it's been in the paper, it's been in the news, these things sneak back up and you know, all of a sudden it's, it's public knowledge and you're stuck trying to fix that. I've heard that argument. Um, while that may be their mindset, it's still a permanent thing. Once that picture's taken and sent, it's gone. You've lost all control of it at that point. Um, you don't know where it's gonna end up. Even if the person on the other end, of that, uh, other end of that phone that you sent that message to, should they see it, send you a cute little message back, oh, that was really nice, I'll delete it right away so you know nobody ever sees it. What a lot of kids don't know is they don't understand the technology. For most of those things, they're thinking it's going from my phone to somebody else's phone and there's nothing between those two. But all too often, it goes through a computer system, it goes through a database someplace, and that's what actually routes it to that other phone. And for some service providers, they actually cache all photographs that come to and from phones. Well, these photos can be databased, they can be sold, they can be resold, they can be traded. The child pornography market in the United States is gigantic, okay? It's a gigantic world, multi-billion dollar market. And these images are traded and sold all the time. So that picture that is on some server someplace, do you 100% trust everybody that has access to that server? And is everybody that has access to that server, are they gonna do the right thing with those pictures? Or 
Are they gonna download a few that nobody will notice and sell them on the market? And when that picture of you when you were 15 shows back up on a child pornography website three, four years down the road as you're in college, are you ready to face that? Are you ready for that realization that maybe that was a bad choice? The biggest things that we try to teach kids is take a second. When you're about to send that message, when you're about to send that picture, when you're about to send that risque message to your boyfriend or your girlfriend, take a second and think. If this message or this picture or this text message was to be broadcast to the entire school, would I want that to happen? If the answer is no, then don't do it. Okay, if you're not prepared for everybody to see it, your classmates, your parents, your grandparents, people that you care about, your friends, if you're not prepared for them all to see it, you shouldn't be sharing it with anybody because two, three years down the road, who knows where it might surface back up again. Deputy Spurlock, thanks for joining us on Internet Protocol. We've made the entire interview with Deputy Spurlock available on our website, iptish.com. Now that we have a better understanding of what sexting is all about, let's bang out some protocol, some guidelines that will help all of us better understand sexting and teenagers. First of all, talk about it. Be open and frankly be blunt when talking with your teens about sexting. They'll sense if you're uptight talking about it, so just get over it. It won't do you or them any good if you water down the conversation or if you sidestep around the issue. Just address sexting head on and really listen to what your teens have to say. Talk about the dangers, the legal ramifications, about how one little sex can stay on their records for the rest of their lives. Even if your kid says he or she has no clue what sexting is all about, talk about it anyway. Chances are they actually do know what it's about. They're just uncomfortable, like you, talking about it. Remember, if you don't bring up the subject, you know who will? They're friends. Now, you should also address the issue of sexting being seen as safe sex. Some teenagers like to call it that because they're exploiting a loophole in the conversation you may have had with them about sex. The fact is, sext messages are pictures of young people being intimate. And that leaves a lot to the imagination and only adds to the pressures teens are already facing to perform sexually. So the argument about sexting being safe sex is just a bunch of bull. Now you might consider talking to your 9, 10, 11, and even 12 year olds about sexting too. Just make sure you're talking their language. But if they have mobile phones, it can't hurt to let them know electronic messages should never contain inappropriate pictures of naked people or people kissing or touching each other. Preteens should already be aware of which behaviors are appropriate and inappropriate. And they're more likely to give you a heads up when they are stumbling across something they've already talked about, like sexting if they know up front that you're not going to get on their case about it. Although I'm a big fan of personal privacy, you're the one paying your teen's cell phone bill and you have the right to know what your kids are doing with that phone. So if you find your teen is using your cell phone service to send sex, don't feel bad about calling the cell phone company and turning off the texting, email, and internet access for that kid's phone. Explain that you want that phone only to be used to make and receive calls, nothing else. Young people depend on text messages for virtually every aspect of their lives and losing the ability to do so because they abused it by sending sex will certainly send a clear and direct message about where you stand on the issue. A couple of months without texting might make them think twice about sexting again. But also be realistic with your teens. Try to treat them as young adults. Respect the fact that they probably have lots of pictures and videos of their friends stored on their phones and realize that not every picture is sexed material. Discuss and delete any overly explicit ones, but give them a break on the others. Teens should be allowed to enjoy their teen years and shooting photos and videos in all sorts of appropriate but goofy situations is really all part of the fun. And lastly, don't feel embarrassed talking with other parents about teen sexting. They're probably wondering how to deal with it too. And they'll undoubtedly appreciate openness and candor from you. And schools can be a great resource as well. Believe me, middle schools and high schools have seen it all. And they should already have mechanisms in place to talk with students about hot topic issues like sex, drugs, gang violence, underage drinking. Sexting can also be and should be added to that list. And your persistence could spark much needed school based discussions. So there you have it. Internet protocol on sexting. We'll be revisiting this topic again many times, I'm sure. Thanks so much for joining us on this debut edition of Internet Protocol with Tish. We so look forward to seeing you again next time.